With no vaccine in sight and a sharp spike in cases, it's tempting to compare the current COVID-19 pandemic to the worst global pandemic of the last century, the misnamed Spanish flu. We say misnamed because a virus that killed tens of millions around the world between 1918 and 1920 didn't originate in Spain. What we know is that this type A, H1N1 influenza, may have come from a bird, and that the first case was reported in Kansas, USA. Regardless, viruses don't discriminate based on your national origin. In the US, the flu left around 675,000 dead. This virus crossed the Atlantic via American soldiers who were going to support the Allies in the final stretch of World War I. It spread from France to the rest of Europe, including Spain, where they called it French flu, the prevalent epidemic, or the Naples soldier, for being as infectious as a song with the same name. Hey, it was a different time back then. With the world caught up in conflict, countries at war censored news of the pandemic to preserve morale. But Spain was neutral in the war, so when its press was the first to report on the disease, it was given the name Spanish flu. Its rapid spread and lack of treatment had a huge global economic impact. The second and deadliest stage of infection came in the fall, when health systems were overwhelmed. Some even say the flu sped up the end of the war by weakening armies and entire countries. Like the coronavirus, 1918's H1N1 caused common flu-like symptoms, such as cough, fatigue, and fever. It also brought fatal respiratory infections. But you have to be careful when trying to compare this pandemic with the current one. For starters, they're different viruses. A big difference is their mortality by age group. While the majority of those killed by COVID-19 are over 80 years old, the so-called Spanish flu killed mainly young people. This may have been because many older people in 1918 had already survived another flu epidemic decades earlier, increasing their immunity. As for the death rate of both viruses, it's almost impossible to compare them because to begin with, the data from a century ago is incomplete. Historians estimate that between 17 and 100 million people died around the world, with an estimated 500 million infections, a third of the world population at the time. The mortality rate would have been between 3.5 and 20%. In addition, there's the problem of recorded numbers versus actual numbers, both then and now. It's very difficult to know exactly how many people are infected because many do not go to hospital or they show no symptoms. That leaves us with COVID-19 mortality rate estimates, ranging from 1.5 to 4.5%. And as the pandemic progresses, those numbers change. It is true that there's still no vaccine against COVID-19, but there's still been more than 100 years of scientific progress since 1918. Back then, there were no antivirals and antibiotics available to treat the conditions caused by the flu. We didn't even know it was caused by a virus. Even access to advanced medical supplies and basic hygiene was much more limited than now. Countries didn't have public health care then. And remember, there was also a world war going on. The rulers of countries at war had sent millions of young men to die, not only in combat, but also from cholera, dysentery, and other diseases that ravaged their trenches. There was also no World Health Organization, no internet, and very little coordination between governments. But we have our own challenges today. We're better connected than ever before, but our ability to travel farther and faster means the virus can too. And with production and supply chains tied together across the world, the economic impact of this pandemic has been massive. Is it worth comparing pandemics? Even back in 1918, health professionals were advising people to wash their hands, apply social distancing, and for people showing symptoms, to ventilate their homes. Schools and universities were closed, but wherever authorities took the flu less seriously and didn't apply the necessary measures, the mortality rate was much higher. Ou seria, quando muito, acometido de uma gripezinha. Ou resfriadinho. More than 23,000 Brazilians have died so far from COVID-19. As is happening now, workers with fewer resources had more trouble following social distancing measures, revealing the inequalities in society. 
In 1918, towns that implemented strict quarantines not only had fewer deaths, but had faster recovery. This might not be the last pandemic we face, and if there's one thing we can learn from our past mistakes, is that the better our prevention and containment measures are, the faster we can get out of this.